And now, suspense. This is Damon. How's it going? Working with the team, guys. This should be a simple in and out. Whatever zombies are still walking should be no problem. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. This is the real plan? It's zombies? Are you always talking about how if you saw a zombie, you'd fuck his shit up? That was bullshit, man. Fuck this. I'm out. This is crazy. You all are gonna die. Sorry, brother. Amateurs. All right, so first off, you know, for those who might not be familiar with you, and what might we have seen you in? Um, my name's Colin Jones. I'm a working actor in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I think the thing that most people, if anyone, would know me from would be my role as Damon in Army of the Dead, a uh, big Zach, Zach uh, Snyder zombie apocalypse movie that I was really lucky to work on um, in the summer of 2019. Um, so that's probably it. And then I've been, you know, I've been recurring on a couple of shows, Manhattan. Um, I've had tiny roles in episodes. I've had sort of more guest star roles in episodes uh, of a show like In Plain Sight back in the earlier 2000s with Mary McCormick and um, lots of procedurals, lots of cop shows, lots of soldier shows. Um, and then obviously, the, you know, Army of the Dead was the big one. Um, I did a show with Kyle Gallner. Uh, who was the star, one of the stars, uh, David Shannon, called Interrogation for three or four episodes for CBS. Um, and then the most th recent thing I worked on that hasn't aired yet uh, is the second season of Waco, which is kind of the follow-up season to the big David Koresh story that, that CBS Paramount did um, three or four years ago. So they're doing another season. So they're kind of revisiting some of the backstory and history of that and i was lucky enough to, to play a pretty cool role in one of the episodes of that yeah so you've been staying uh staying pretty busy or is it kind of like downtime right now it's it's crazy i've been auditioning pretty consistently for the last five or six months um but booking things has been elusive you know and it's always that's but that's i've been in for 17 years in albuquerque so i know that you're going to ride the roller coaster of auditioning and booking. And then sometimes it's just going to be auditioning for a long time. And then you're going to book a bunch of stuff in a row and then you're going to have a slow period. And it's just part of the deal. You know, I think unless you're a known commodity or a name actor, um, that's just the way it goes. You know, you, you audition, you do your work, you submit, you stay in touch with your agent, you make good impressions on the casting directors, and sometimes you work and sometimes you don't. You know, I thought that, I really thought that Army of the Dead was going to be this crazy catalyst for my career just to, because of who was in it, how big the movie was, the fact that Zach and Deborah produced it, um, and because of the hubbub that went on before the movie came out. I kind of thought, all right, this is the launching point for a different sector of my career or a different, like, my career is going to go up from here immediately. It's going to skyrocket or at least plateau at a higher level than it is right now. And I haven't found that to be the experience. Um, but I've, I have noticed that my auditions, the level of roles that I'm reading for, I'm reading for a lot more recurring roles. I'm reading for mm -hmm. a lot more uh, roles that have a story arc in a, in a complete feature film. So if that movie had any effect on my career, other than like, Reddit boards and like Twitter discussions. <laughs> I think that maybe the the quality of my auditions, the quality of roles I'm reading for has gone up, I think, significantly since since that movie came out. And I find that a lot of um a lot of the up and coming actors and stuff that I've talked to, they I don't know how you feel about it, but they they really enjoy that that hustle. You know what I mean? Like I I that's what I really respect about all of these like up and coming actors and ones that are still working and getting trying to book auditions, uh trying to like, you know, book roles and stuff there they're some real big hustlers and I truly respect that. Yeah. I find that I'm a, I have a, I'm a single dad of a 15 year old boy who's playing high school basketball. So when he's with me, it's like, we're up at five 30 AM out the door by six 30. And then he's often at school in the gym until seven o'clock. So then we got to come home and make dinner and get ourselves ready for the next day and blah, blah, blah. And then sometimes I'll get an audition on, you know, Wednesday night at six o'clock and then it's due by Friday morning by 10 a.m. So really my only opportunity to shoot the audition is on Thursday. So I've got to get with my guy who has a studio, who can operate the camera, who can be my reader. And then I'll go to my day job and I'll bring clothes for the audition to change into. And then I'll change midday, leave my shop for an hour and a half or two hours, come back, put my grubbies back on to keep making jewelry. And then, you know, so 
fitting just fitting the audition process into really a pretty normal life is is a little bit of a hustle for me um but it's something that keeps me on my toes it's something that keeps me honest knowing that all right for this part of the day i'm dad and partner of my family business and then in this little sector of the day i gotta really go back to actor mode lay this audition down in a quality way get it uploaded to the casting director and make sure that you know everything all the labeling is done correctly so there's there's that hustle element um for sure i don't think that i have the same hustle element that some do where they're always on youtube always on tiktok always on instagram um doing live streams i've never i didn't grow up in that era i'm 46 mm -hmm. so i think i'm 10 or 12 years older than the generation of actors that are really quote unquote creating content on all platforms every day um, and maybe that's something that I'm going to have to start doing. You mm -hmm. know, I've thought about YouTube series. I've thought about um, just making myself more prominent on social media somehow. But it also doesn't feel um, like an organic part of my life. And I don't want to force it. So if it ever comes about naturally, I'm going to do it. Otherwise, this is the hustle I'm going to maintain, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I totally feel that with the uh, even like st doing this kind of stuff. I do it more as like a hobby or like an, a creative outlet for myself because I, I too, you know, we've talked about this a couple of times, you know, like uh, messaging each other. Like I'm a dad as well, trying to just feed my family and uh, doing what doing what I can to just make sure they've got what they need. Right. And this is all like in fun. I love doing this. I think it's 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 great. I I enjoy what I do on here. And even as far as making myself relevant on social media too, it's it's also very hard for me because I'm not a very like um, extroverted person. So right. like having to always be like, oh, hey guys, like this is what I'm doing or hey, uh, check out my stuff. It doesn't feel organic to me. It's, it feels very forced, but it's something that like we all just have to do. Like we just got to bite the bullet and just do it. Right. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like there's this assumption that because I'm an actor that I'm also very social and that I'm also very, I love being in, in photographs and stuff. And it's complete. I found it to be kind of completely untrue outside of my acting life. I don't want to say I'm an introvert because I do enjoy going out and hanging with friends and stuff, but it's not as often as I used to. Obviously that's just lifestyle changes when you have a kid and when you get older, but I, I have this side of me that's very, willing to be on camera, really willing to be on stage in a theatrical play or whatever. And then there's a part of me that I just like to, I kind of just like to chill and be by myself <laughs> and not have to worry about answering questions or, you know, being on or, or whatever you want to call it. So I, I get that, you know, and, and some of these people have that tendency. They just want to be on social media present in front of people all the time. And, and like we both said, it's not organically part of who we are. So why, why force it? Yeah, and that's why I think I, I, I connect a lot with you and me and you kind of talk back and forth a lot in the DMs on Instagram. And it's mostly just normal stuff, you know, like me and you, we talk about like just average everyday human stuff. And that's what I, I, I like about you. I relate to you in that sense is, yeah, you're, you're, you're you know, you're in the uh, in the acting world and stuff, but we connect a lot with our with the fact that we're both dads. Well, and you post some really, really funny stuff. Too. <laughs> I have to admit, like, you don't you don't blow out the content but when you do it's really well selected funny like specific stuff and i appreciate that about you and then there is the dad part like i i can relate to any other dude who is just trying to and i know it sounds cliche but just keep a roof over your kid's head and gas in the car and food on the table and clothes on everybody's back and that's i think that's something that unless you have kids it's it's a hard thing to connect to or understand and i also think it should be celebrated you know i'm a single dad and i know that when my son is with me he's my focus and he's my purpose and everything else that comes along with life is sort of either just a bonus or a necessity i guess i was um i have two kids i have uh my youngest is three just turned three in september and my oldest is nine Dang. um I, everyone tells me like you don't look old enough to have a nine-year-old <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i was like oh thank you thank you but um yeah with him well with my oldest i was a single dad for almost four years before i met my wife so that time i was still in school i was, I was still very young i was in school i was trying to maintain a, a full-time job and i was you know 
pretty much on my own trying to raise this kid by myself. Um, I had a lot of help from my mom. So I'm like forever grateful to my mom for helping me out. When you're a parent to an infant, you know, you got to get up like every couple of hours, feeding, changing, like you get no sleep. I used to have like heavy, heavy bags under my eyes. You know, <laughs> I'd be going to school and people are like, why are you so tired? I'm like, I, I'm here. I have a job. I have a child. Like I'm doing it all right now, you know? Yep. So yep. when I finally uh, met my wife, it was the with our with my second child, it was so much easier. I mean, it's still hard, but it was so much easier because this time around I had a partner. Yeah, you can call time out and say, hey, I need to go. I just need to go hide in the bathroom for 15 minutes or whatever and regain my composure. Can you please take over? I promise I'll do my share. I, you know, when my son was born, his mom and I were still together uh, for the first couple of years of his life. Um, and I don't want to misrepresent it. I mean, we, she and I are, are really, really close friends. Um, she participate. It's an equal participation in his life, just in separate homes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those first couple of years might be, might've been easier because I knew that I could, it was kind of a tag team situation. It's like, all right, you got, you please take the next hour. I promise you, I'll make it up to you. I'll take the 3 a.m. wake up or whatever if he's crying in his crib or whatever. So, yeah, my kid is what changed everything about my attitude, about myself, about work, about purpose, about work ethic. I think when you have another person you're responsible for, everything just kind of changes. And um, so I take that with me into every audition. I go, OK, if I book this six week long job or this recurring role on this series or this big you know, feature role, what am I going to be able to do for my kid that I otherwise wouldn't be able to? And I, I take that focus into every audition because I want to be able to do more for him and for us. You know, um, we're happy, we're content, but there's some trips we want to take. There's some places we want to go. He's a 15 year old boy. So there's a bunch of Jordans and, you know, Kobe's that he wants. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are the things that I got to focus on like, when I go into my audition. And plus just, the pride that comes along with knowing that you did the interview so well that they wanted to hire you. Um, and then sort of putting I've, after 17 years, like I said, I, I've put for the most part, I've been able to just sort of not take it personally. If I book a role, um, maybe later on in our discussion, I can tell you about like the biggest heartbreak of my career if it comes mm -hmm. up, but yeah, it's being a dad made everything better about my life. Yeah. I definitely feel that for me as well. Like at the time when my first son was born, I was just your typical kid. Just I was just hanging around the wrong kind of crowd. And all I wanted to do was party. You know, I was young and I was like, well, you know, I just want to party. I just want to do what I want. And then, you know, this kid gets dropped into my lap and that changes everything. That changes your entire thought process and how you think. And once you have a child, like you can no nothing is about you anymore. Especially when you have a kid young, you know, you're just always you're very selfish. It's always me. Like, what can I do for me? Like, and once you have a kid, all everything you do from now on is about them. Like you don't matter whatsoever. No, I totally agree. And I, my son came, it's kind of an interesting story. I was in graduate school for acting. Um, and I was engaged to one of my classmates from my undergrad. We reconnected years after we graduated college, ended up falling in love, got engaged. And then she and I broke up in the midst of being in separate grad graduate programs, you know, 500 miles apart, it just, it wasn't working. So we broke up. Mm -hmm. I got home to Albuquerque and I met um, this woman who is, is my son's mom. And I kind of told her, you know, like, these are my plans. I want to move to LA or I want to move to New York. I haven't made my mind up yet. I just, I either want to go film in LA or I want to go do the theater grind in New York. And then our son came along and immediately I had to face this question of like, am I the kind of guy who's going to have a kid and move away from this child to pursue my career in a selfish way? Or do I just have to rearrange my life, stay here, raise this kid? So I chose that, obviously. But then the film and TV business just landed on Albuquerque at like the same exact moment that my son came about. And it was like, oh, I made the right choice. And I know that the reward for my choice is that now I can do the work that I love in the same town that my son lives in. And I can do all the things about being a dad and an actor in my hometown. And it was like, okay, this is, I don't want to say it was the universe's reward to me for making that choice, but it was really a great um, serendipity of events. And uh, I, I, 
I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for um, my son, first of all, and then film and TV landing here at the same time I was trying to figure out how to raise him. So uh, it's been a, it's been an all around awesome experience.